What global trends are you seeing right now? What we want to focus on in this video is the mass exodus that we're seeing from Southeast Asia into Europe and Latin America. We're seeing this mass exodus of expats exiting Southeast Asia for a number of reasons. The first reason that we want to get started talking about in this video is how the past health crisis affected a lot of the uh, decisions that were made by nomads and expats. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. If we take a look at the period between 2020 to 2022, you know, it was like a pretty short time window where a lot of things changed in terms of visa policies in Southeast Asia. A lot has changed. I was fortunate to have left the region right before the past health crisis began, making it a very, very lucky exit for me personally. And since then, many of my my friends left Asia for good for a number of reasons. First of all, the visa policies have gotten much, much tighter. It's become very difficult to obtain a residence permit in many countries. For instance, in Vietnam, a lot of things have changed. Now, the options that are available are, for instance, for you to open up a company where you can get a two-year residence permit in Vietnam, but it does not lead to citizenship and which is always the problem that we're coming back to. If you want to relocate to a country and you want to establish yourself in that country, what you need is residency with a path to citizenship. Expats, and we're talking now about people that are, I would say, in their late 20s or older, they're looking for comfort. They're looking for stability. Whenever you want to establish yourself in a new country, obtaining a residence permit is the way to go. And if you're in a legitimate country, Country, it leads to citizenship. If residency does not lead to citizenship, then you're looking at a scam. Like it must lead to it. Otherwise, it is not a real residency. Unconditional permanent residency with a path to citizenship is what nomads and expats that are at a certain age, you know, like people who are looking to establish themselves. You know, let's say I'm coming here and I want to buy real estate. Great, I can do that. I can own real estate as a foreigner. But what's also important for me is to have that security where I know that at some point, I I can obtain residency here and also citizenship because I want to be part of the country. Think about it. You wanting to relocate to Spain. What do you need, Bianca? You need residency and citizenship. It's important because you want to integrate, you want to settle down, and this gives people comfort. And in Paraguay, this is offered as much as it is offered in many, or I should say most Latin countries where you can become a citizen. And just going back now to the situation and how it evolved in Asia, I wanted to point out here a country that has undergone a lot of drastic changes over the past years, namely Malaysia. There were certain phases during the past health crisis where MM2H pass holders who perceived that an MM2H pass is a residence permit, they thought that they could enter Malaysia during a very important moment in time or a very challenging time, like a health crisis. But they actually realized that that was not the case. Many were stranded overseas and they were not allowed to enter. Another thing that happened in the same country with with the same visa is that the leadership at the time they decided to change the policies and they also said that the changes would apply to people who currently hold that pass and that threw a lot of people apart they felt like wow i qualified under the original requirements which means that I do not have to qualify under new requirements in the future. And to those people, when the leadership made that announcement, it was a big deal. Why? They thought that whatever the original deal was, was going to be the same in the future. But they learned the cold hard reality that that's not the case. And so I feel like a lot of people had to make changes. And then in 2021, the new requirements came out and they were actually quite shocking. Quadrupled income requirements, which means that, you know, whatever income you had before, you probably needed four times that money in order to qualify. You know, it used to be 10,000 ringgit a month, then it was 40,000 a month. Now, in 2023, the government re-relaunched the program, making it a bit easier. Malaysia is a very interesting country. It's a beautiful country, has so much to offer, but because of those drastic ongoing visa changes, and this is not just the MM2H program, it's also been the Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Program that's been paused and resumed. You know, like people want 
stability. And when people want to invest in a country, they want to invest with the you know calm, knowing that the requirements will not change for them. And in Paraguay, they have not changed. In Mexico, I mean, certain changes happened, but it was more that the income changed, and that was based on inflation. That was based on just increasing its sum. But the path to citizenship is still the same in Mexico as it was before. And Latin countries have been the most open during the past health crisis, allowing many people to travel to these countries pretty freely. What has changed in Thailand since the last health crisis? So Thailand is a country that is no stranger to visa changes, like probably the country with the most visa changes in the whole region, possibly. I mean, but what happened in Thailand, and I'm going to make an example here because I did apply for the Thai elite visa and it wasn't like 2021 and uh, a friend of mine and we were considering, hey, you know what, we should probably grab the Thai elite visa. And there was a reason behind this thinking, right? So we thought about that because we knew that the requirements would eventually change. You know, they would pretty much move the numbers up and then of following thing happened, you know, we applied and we got pre-approved, you know, it's like you get the pre-approval letter. And in my instance, back then, the pre-approval letter said that, you know, you've been approved to pay the amount and obtain this visa. But then they added a, a disclaimer to the approval letter that said that because we're in this health crisis right now, we cannot guarantee that you can enter because this decision is ultimately up to the leadership of the country. And that kind of Uh, really changed my perspective on things a lot. I was applying with a friend of mine and we were looking into getting this visa because we had spent quite a lot of time in Thailand and we always enjoyed it. You know, it got so much to offer. But because of this clause, we felt like, you know, this is probably not the right place for us at the time. And then we decided looking into different options, which we ended up doing. And that's how my journey in Latin America started, where I just saw too many big changes in Asia, if you will. Why are nomads living in Asia? for Latin America? This question is a pretty broad one to answer, but given what occurred during the past health crisis, I feel like one of the biggest reasons is that people just want stability and they want certainty. They want to be in a country where they know, hey, you know what, tomorrow the visa policy will probably still be the same as it was yesterday. So I feel like the main reason is that people want comfort. And uh, think about it, moving to a new country is a lot of stress. You've got to plan for it. You've got to research options and you got to find an agency to work with for a a lot of things. So people think twice about that. This is not like as easy as a walk in a park. Like moving to a new country is a serious choice and decision that people are making where people really have to think about the different options and they have to narrow down. What does this country offer me? Am I happy with that? And what does that country offer me? Am I happy with that? So people have to really carefully examine the options they're looking at and then come to a decision that just fits them the best, I think. But given what happened, I feel like people People want reciprocity in civil and property rights and people want to be able to live in a region where there's just more uh, predictability than in other regions where they know, okay, I qualified under the current requirements, whatever they were, chances uh, of these requirements changing in the future are probably slim to none. And this very certainty, I call it a certainty, it exists in certain countries, but it doesn't exist everywhere. Another point, actually, the entry requirements, like what it takes to get residential residency in Paraguay or Mexico. Like the entry requirements are substantially lower than there are in other countries. If you want to become a citizen of Dubai, I mean, very few people were able to do that because there's just too much requirement there. Or let's say you want to become a resident of Italy, a resident of Spain, a resident, I don't know of what country, Australia or just America. If you're an immigrant in America, okay, if you got petitioned you got petitioned by by your uncle, by your brother, by your sister, whoever. As long as you get petitioned, it's actually very easy to get into a country. But to qualify on your own through financial means is so much harder. But there are certain countries in like Latin America, I would say specifically in Latin America, where it's so much easier to qualify. Why? Because these countries are immigrant countries. You know, this is how these countries were built. If we take a look at Asia, it's very different. Or if we uh, take a look at Europe, right? I mean, technically, Europe was also built by immigrants you know, a lot of it. But just looking at it from this point of view, it's like, where do you go 
when you have limited financial resources. You go to places that have relaxed requirements because when they have relaxed requirements, it's just easier to qualify. And that doesn't mean that, hey, you know, you can go to any Latin country and not have, you know, to prove anything related to finance. You actually do have to do that in many countries. But then depending on what visa you're choosing, okay, the entry requirements will be different. The application requirements will be different. But just from a like citizenship perspective, it's so much easier to become a citizen of a Latin country. Plus you get to keep your original citizenship. Whereas in Asian countries, you cannot become a dual citizen. So if you were to obtain citizenship in an Asian country, cool. Maybe you can do that in many countries you cannot. For you to do that is actually very hard and the requirement is just so much steeper. And I feel like it has to do with the certainty. Yes, that's true. But then it also has to do with like other facts, like entry requirements are important. And just knowing that, yeah, this country will not like turn around, change the requirements from one day to the next is just have, having this certainty, Bianca, where this is not the case everywhere. And people want that. Another thing that I want to point out is that being welcome is also important. You know, the mass exodus that we're seeing from Asia into Latin America, I feel like, you know, being welcome is very important. And I'm not saying that you're not welcome in Asia. You're not welcome in other places. You are. In fact, the locals are very, very friendly. But on an institutional level, just talking like about the leaderships of the country, like you're just more welcome here. Like these are immigrant countries. You know, whether you go to Panama, whether you go to Mexico, whether you go to like Paraguay, Argentina, right? These are immigrant countries. And for instance, in Argentina, you can become a citizen in two short years. Yeah, you have to live there for a good amount of time each year to become a citizen right more than half of the year to become a citizen but there's a path there and it's two years if you want to go try do that in a different country let's say in an Asian country good luck you can do that but the chances of you becoming a citizen are slim to none can you do it possibly you know if you are a large investor or if you have a political context maybe you can do it but here like every and any person that follows the legal path can become a resident they can become a citizen I'm not saying that it's like smooth as silk or that there no problems or there's no application process there's nothing to do i'm not saying that but you're welcome here and so because of that we recommend latin america we recommend mexico and paraguay if you want to come live in these two countries and you want to use us for helping you obtain a residence permit feel free to reach out to us you should see a link now shown right below this video thank you for watching nomad elite and we see you on the next video